Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you are doing well. Today we are back in Minecraft and recently the 1.10 snapshots have started up which is awesome because we've got some great new features. One of those things is the structure block. Now this guy is actually going to be pretty important going forward. It's going to go hand in hand with command blocks. So I thought it would be a great idea to introduce you to them. What are they? How do they work? And how can you use them yourself? Okay, so let me introduce you to each variation of the structure block. So we have save, load, corner, and data. Now currently, data doesn't really do much. We're not entirely sure why it's here, but it looks pretty. So it's essentially the Kim Kardashian of structure blocks. But right now, we don't really need her. So let me explain what each of these three remaining do. Okay, so let's start with the save structure block. Now, structure blocks are probably best compared to something like clone. They're not exactly the same, but they do something similar. They can both spawn a structure or building from seemingly nothing, but there is a few key differences. So where clone requires something to reference in the world, for example, if we wanted to clone this tower over there, then this tower needs to exist in the world. Now with structure blocks, this isn't quite the case. So with structure blocks, you can actually basically convert this building or any building, any structure into something of a schematic file, which will then be stored in your world save. From this point on, you can use it whether it's in the world, or whether it's not in the world. Okay, so now let's take a look at the interface of the save structure block. This is what it looks like when you open one up. So we've got a couple of options, but it's pretty easy to understand. Up here we have the structure name. This is the name of your structure. This is the name that the file, the structure file, the schematic file will actually take in your structures folder. So let's just call this Sark's Tower to start with. And we actually have these two other options, so relative position and structure size. So relative position is basically to just move the offset of the starting point, you'll understand in a moment. And the structure size is the size of the structure. So let's actually just set a structure size so we can actually demonstrate. So let's just set it to maybe five, five, and five, and then click done. And immediately you'll notice that we suddenly have an outline in the world. This is our selection. So it actually has a general user interface, which is pretty cool. Um, now, going, going back in here, if we actually change the relative position, for example, if I go up two instead of one, the selection goes up two. If we can go three on the X, it will move three to the X. So the actual starting point will move when you change the selection. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next variation, which is the corner structure block. Now the corner block actually goes hand in hand with the save block, and I'll show you why. So with the save block, you can actually manually enter the structure size. For example, if we wanted this to be five blocks tall, we just enter something like this, which is a perfectly acceptable way of doing it. And that's the selection. But sometimes that might be a little bit tricky to do. It might be a slow process, trial and error, and sometimes you're going to get it wrong. And there's actually a better way to do it. So this involves the corner block. So first of all, what you want to do is make sure your structure is named. So this is Sucks Tower. Then you want to take a corner block and give it the same name. So you can see this one has call, is called Sucks Tower as well. Now, the next thing you want to do is go to the lowest point of your structure. So if you open up your F3 screen and look at your crosshair, the lowest point is always the one that points where all of these three lines converge. So it would be right here. I'll give you a little tip on how to visualize that in a moment. So start at the lowest point and then go to the highest point, which is over here on the opposite side. Again, open up the F3 to, to see where the, the highest point is. And the way to visualize it is basically, imagine this very point here, this, this vertex, is it called a vertex? I think it is. So this vertex here to this vertex down here is the selection zone. So it won't actually include the, the, the corner blocks. So once you're ready, make sure that the save structure block is actually within the vicinity. This should be fine. Open it up and click detect. As you can see, it's detected and the size seems to be pretty good and it's actually automatically detected for us we didn't have to manually enter anything which is pretty cool okie dokie so now let's take a look at the final block which is the load structure block and load is essentially the opposite of save so where save takes a structure and converts it to a file load takes a file and converts it to a structure in the world now before we begin make sure to save this structure is just by clicking save in the save block this will actually write that structure to file 
right here. So right here we now have the load screen. It's pretty similar to the save screen, although there are a couple differences. So most notably, if you take a look down here, you'll see a couple buttons. And what these buttons do is essentially let you rotate or mirror your structure. That is that is definitely something you cannot do with code, which is pretty neat. So let me show you this in action. If you just pop in here and press this load button, this will partially load the structure. It doesn't actually bring anything to the world, but it shows you this selection screen. Now I'd like to bring your attention to the colors of this selection. As you can see, this side is red, this is blue, this is green. Now, red means positive X, blue means positive Z, and green means positive Y. Now, we open up the F3 screen, you can see my crosshair also has this little system, and you can see these two match. Now, the way to tell where something's been rotated is where how these colors are organized. So, if I just close that up and go in here, if I press the 90, you can see that it actually will move the selection. And if I open my F3 again, you can see that now the colors actually no longer match. They're not, no longer aligned. And that's because I've rotated it 90 degrees. Now, as you can see, I've rotated it 90 degrees and the, the long way, uh, as I've described, the length of the selection is now facing this way. Whereas before, if I go back to zero, it was facing this way. Now you can do that on basically all of them. So you can do zero, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, or back to zero degrees. And that's how that works. Um, the middle button right here is the mirror button, um, and it has three options. So it has default, which looks like the default. You can see the, the two things align. And it also has uh, two different options. So if you click it once, it will actually mirror on the Z axis. So as you can see, it flips on the Z, so the Z is no longer aligned. And if you click it again, it will flip on the X axis. So as you can see, they no longer align. Now this might look a little bit similar to the 90 degree rotation, but you'll notice that this one is actually going up the length this direction. So if I just switch that back to 90, to default and then 90, you can see the length is now this way. So that's, that's an easy way to tell how you're rotating or mirroring your selection. And of course, to actually load the structure in, you will just press the load button again, and it will load it in. As you can see this time, I've rotated it 90 degrees. Just a couple more things to note. Now this does actually work with redstone. You can use redstone to activate the save and load blocks. Although there is a, a minor difference and that is that save will not save to disk. So it will save to memory. So if you're just in the world and you save something, it will save it to memory. But if you log out the world and log back in, it will no longer work. Um, it will not save to disk. It won't write a file because if it did, then people could just start using 20 hertz clocks and start filling up your hard drive, which, which, uh, which wouldn't be great. So you have to do this manually if you want to do it. Secondly, you may have noticed that there's actually an option to include entities in the save. And yes, this does actually mean that we can now clone entities, which is definitely something that we could not do before. But this comes with a bit of an issue, uh, kind of a warning. Um, if you clone an entity, it will clone the entity exactly. And the problem with this is basically it will clone its UUID. So you'll end up with two entities with the same UUID. If you don't know what a UUID is, it's basically a universally unique identifier. Um, and every entity has one, and as the name implies, they're all unique, and they're supposed to be unique. If they're not unique, then you start getting problems. So, just a word of warning, if you're trying to clone entities, always make sure the original, the original entity is gone and out of the world before you want to clone in something new. Thirdly, there's actually an extra feature in the load structure block called integrity. Now integrity can range from 0 to 1, any number in between 0 and 1. And basically what integrity does is it kind of varies how dilapidated the building is. And it's actually very good for natural structures. So if I set this to 0 0.7 for example, click load and load again, you'll see that the tower actually comes in a little bit broken. And whilst this doesn't necessarily look good in this case, it would actually look pretty good for something like an old ruins or something. So basically, if I set this to, I don't know, 0 0.5, then it will look even more dilapidated than this. Pretty handy. Finally, there's actually an extra secret little block called the structure void. And this guy is pretty cool. It's kind of similar to the clones mask feature. So let me show you how it works. If you pop into your save block and enable invisible blocks, you'll see that suddenly we have these little blue cubes. These represent air or invisible blocks. And this is pretty cool, but here's the problem. So we've got this little tree stump and we want to basically embed it into the ground. The problem we'll face though is because these blocks here are air, it won't be seamless and it will look a bit out of place. This is where structure voids come in. Structure voids basically tell the game to ignore these blocks. Do not include air. It doesn't really matter what's there, just keep it where it is. So for example, let's actually just leave, 
do those three and leave this corner over here and save it as so. And if we come over here and load it up, we'll see the difference that we get. So the ones with the structure void actually just kept the sandstone, whereas the one over here, which just uh, air copied over the air. So this is the Opto one. So a pretty, pretty neat feature if you're trying to blend structures into the environment. But anyway, guys, that is pretty much all there is to it. Very cool. I'm very interested to see what people can come up with with this awesome new block. But anyway, guys, if you found this video helpful, and like is, of course, always much appreciated, subscribe if you're not already. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.